Hi, I'm Angie and today I want to talk about um, yeah, making chocolate in hot climates or during summer. Um, and I want to talk about um, yeah, making chocolate during summer for me as a private person but also um, from the perspective of um, me as a small chocolate business. I live in Seattle and so right now it's January, it's um, like really dark and gloomy and we have temperatures between 5 to 10 degrees Celsius. So I'm not worried at all about um, like making chocolate um, at this moment, but I'm already scared for summer. <laughs> when Private Angie thinks about summer, it's like all about melons and beaches and ice cream and you know all the fun things that summer has to offer, um, but there's also chocolate Angie. And Chocolate Angie is very, very scared about summer. Like it's a nightmare for me. Like mentioned before, it is January right now and I'm already scared for July. Temperatures will be rising. We will have a really, hopefully nice summer, like um, up to 30 degrees Celsius. And uh, yeah, it's going to be rough making chocolate and selling chocolate. And with summer, I mean, like honestly, everything above 25 degrees Celsius. And um, especially when it's also humid in your area where you live, uh, it really makes it worse. Um, so it's really, really hard to temper chocolate, to store chocolate. And um, I really, I have two chocolate bars that I will uh, not temper anymore during summer. I have a white chocolate matcha and a white chocolate raspberry. And they're so heat sensitive that I just cannot bring them uh, into temper. Like I reach temperatures um, that I'm supposed to reach while tempering, but as soon as I release the mold, like they get bendy again and it's a nightmare. So I will not um, temper them anymore <laughs> during summer. Um, and I'm sure you have the same issues. One of the reasons why I want to record this video today is um, because last summer I received a lot of questions from you out there that were like, mm, yeah, I have my chocolate in my fridge. All looks good, all is perfect. And then I put it out, release my bomb logs and they melt pretty much immediately. What can I do? Um, and so now I really want to talk a little bit um, what I'm doing uh, during summer. I know that, I mean, I live in Seattle, so it's never going to be as hot as um, like in Texas or some places in India and especially not as humid. Um, but I just want to tell you um, what I'm doing and some, some, some tricks maybe. So the first probably really obvious thing is get an AC, an air conditioning. But here's the thing. Um, I've been in, I think four or five uh, commercial kitchens now and none of them had air conditioning, none. Um, simply because um, I'm sharing the kitchen space with other, with other small businesses, um, especially food trucks and they fry all day and they um, use the oven all day and the stove. And so it's really, really hot um, in the kitchen either way. And so it doesn't really make sense for the commercial kitchen um, to build in an AC. Um, so yeah, that's like another big issue for me as a small business. And so the next things I want to talk about is really if you don't have access um, to an AC. Because I'm there with you. <laughs> If you don't have access to an air conditioning, um, I recommend working as fast as you can. Really as fast as you can. So you temper your chocolate, you pour it into the mold and then you put it into the fridge. But here's the next thing. Fridge, condensation, water. Your chocolate doesn't want water. It doesn't like water. Um, but if it's really humid, it is possible that your chocolate will, um, will attract some water uh, on the surface. Um, but honestly, I don't see any uh, way around that if your kitchen is super hot. So you might need to risk some condensation on your chocolate. So I've been working in commercial kitchens before when I was uh, really standing in the fridge and was tempering chocolate and pouring in chocolate and everything. Um, but of course, like uh, commercial kitchens have those huge fridges where you can really go inside. Um, but yeah, that's uh, what I did in the past as well, like working in the fridge. Fun times, fun times. And another important thing, adjust your schedule. Work in the morning, work at nights, just when it's a little bit cooler outside, or maybe make chocolate on days where it's not as hot. Um, it might not be super convenient. Um, I'm, during summer, I'm really getting up super early in the morning to make chocolate. Um, because then I don't have the food trucks in the kitchen that make it hot and I don't um, have the temperatures from outside. So that's pretty good. That has been working out more or less well in the past. 
Now one or two uh, words to storage. Um, the fridge is not an ideal place to store your chocolate. It is just too cold and um, we also have the issue with condensation. So a wine cooler or like a wine cellar will be the perfect place for your chocolate bar. It is not super cool. It has usually an ideal temperature of like 16, 80 degrees Celsius. And so this would be an ideal place um, yeah, to, to store your chocolate. I don't have one. Um, I just don't have the space for it. So um, I have an AC in my storage unit, which works great. One more thing, transportation. Another one of my nightmares. Okay, let's say you have made this beautiful box of chocolate. It is your friend's birthday. You want to drive there with your car, maybe 20 minutes or so. so you're good to go. You go into your car and your car has 50 degrees Celsius inside. <sighs> It will take some time until the AC of your car is cooling down your car completely um, and during maybe those five to ten minutes, I don't know, your chocolate can be like a total mess. So what I recommend doing or what I'm doing myself, I have these bags with like insulated uh, foil. And so I put some ice packs into those bags and my chocolate um, and then I'm pretty much good to go. Um, I also have a cooler bag if I have, I mean it depends where I'm going, um, but that's what I'm using. And I'm also using some paper outside of, um, of, of the ice packs just in case they melt so the water isn't like getting directly into my chocolate. So that's how I transport uh, my chocolate during summer. If you're interested in uh, shipping chocolate during summer, please just leave me a comment in the description below so I know it. I don't want to talk about it um, here in this video because it's probably already getting too long. Um, but yeah, if you want to have a video about shipping during summer, let me know and I'll make a video, I record a video, promised. So we're at the end of this video. Um, let me know what you think about all of this. I know that a lot of you live in much, much harsher conditions than I do. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think. Let me know what you're doing. Um, and um, if you have questions, of course, you can also leave them in the comments below um, or send me a, a DM on Instagram at Chocolate Spiel. And that's all. Have a good one and I hope you can enjoy your summer. <laughs> Bye.